Welcome back to another episode of the Live Your Dreams podcast. I'm your host, Joe Gowalas, alongside my fantastic co-host, Chris Victor. Chris Victor, I will tell you, my yes. friend, we are here day three, 2024, South by Southwest on the beautiful rooftop of the JW Marriott. Exciting times. With an incredible individual. Are you kidding me? The list of accomplishments that this man has is astronomical. Yes. Jacques Brotbar and his film, Bob Trevino Likes It, has premiered at South by Southwest. He is the composer and his career in music is beyond impressive. He is not only involved with Bob Trevino Likes It, but we all remember the OC. Oh, yeah. yes, we do. Jock, thank right. you so much for coming on thank the you Live so Your Dreams podcast. Thank, thank you, for, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank yes. you. Thank Jock, you. you are here, South by Southwest 2024. Tell us first a little bit more about the film that you're involved in. So the film that's uh, playing is Bob Trevino Likes It, and it's a sort of coming-of-age film uh, about a woman, about a young woman whose relationship with her father is really strained, and she goes looking for family on Facebook and ends up connecting with another gentleman with the same name as her father, yeah. who she thinks might be him, uh, and then they strike up a friendship, and she learns about herself and grows. It's, it's a really beautiful story. That, that's beautiful. I mean, I, you could tell that's a human connection mm -hmm. story. Now, as a composer, when somebody brings you a script, when, do you, when does a composer get involved with the process of the filmmaking? Whole, do you come in and post? Are you watching the script at the beginning before the movie gets made? I'm interested to hear about that. Well, for this, um, I got involved right away. Okay. I got the script. I read the script, and I was like, oh, my God, i got to get involved with this story. It's really amazing. I met with the director, Tracy Lehman, and we hit it off, and we talked a couple of references. Mm -hmm. She told me some of her inspiration, and I started writing music right away. And I started sending her things that I called explorations, yeah. kind of away from picture. Yeah. And um, I sent them to her while she was shooting, and she started to really connect with the music. So she started playing music on set for the, uh, for the actors and for the uh, DP to kind of shoot to, which was really, really cool. And then that way, when they started editing, they started editing to my music, oh, wow, which right. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that my music was already like kind of in the template. And so for this film, it started right at the script stage. That's yeah. fantastic. When you read a script, what do you personally look for when you say, I want to get involved and do this? Oh, it's all about story. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about, you know, I identify with the story. It's about um, narcissism, you know, and I, I grew up with narcissism in my family, and I was like, you know, this is an important story that people should see, and uh, I really wanted to be a part of it. So that's a personal connection to the story. Then. Yes, exactly. I, I felt personally strong about the themes and uh, about the story. So when you connect with a theme like that, because music is its own universal language, I would say. And music speaks around the world, right? Everybody can relate to song. We hear it as infants in a crib. We love music as human beings. We relate to it. When you start to compose, what's your first part of the process? How you go from script to actually composing a musical piece? Uh, I usually go through, uh, through terror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just be like, what do I do now? How do I, you know, use my skills to kind of help this story? And I, I literally, I don't know where it comes from. I just kind of sit down at the computer or with my piano or guitar, and I just start playing what I think makes sense. Mm. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason. Mm. It kind of just comes out, and I'll send ideas the director to see if I'm close because we can talk about musical ideas all day yeah but really you need something to throw something against the wall to see if anything sticks no, no that, that makes complete sense in that kind of realm now what motivated a young Jacques to get involved with music as a young man because you just don't pick this out of you know a hat you know your life gets inspired at some Did point we just started at 15 years old that's quite young yeah yeah um which one should I use? Go right there. Oh, Go okay. ahead. All right. <laughs> um, I started playing violin when I was in first grade. Oh, wow. But I didn't like it at all. It was not for me. Okay. Um, but when I was 12, I went to visit a cousin, and um, he was older than me, and he had a guitar lesson. And my mom was like, you're going with your cousin to the guitar lesson, which I did not want to do. <laughs> it sounded boring as all heck. <laughs> um, and so I went, and I had like a complete cinematic experience where I was sitting there and my cousin was doing like his, I don't even know what he was playing, but it was almost as if like if there was a camera, it would like push in slowly huh. yeah. to his fingers on the guitar. And I just knew I had to start doing that. You had that vision. I had a vision. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to play guitar for the rest of my life. And it, that happened at 12. That's me. That's beautiful. You had that epiphany. It worked. I love that because so many artists go through 
something like that. Now, as a young artist, when you're coming up, because a lot of our listeners are younger, they're trying to get involved with the craft. Was it always an easy thing? Because so many people leave their beautiful art form, this business, because they find it too hard at points. Was it always an easy journey? Was there overtaking over barriers you had to kind of overpass? Uh, it was definitely not easy. Um, in fact, I went back to school to study composition yeah. for film and television. And I remember after some successes, I had about six months of, of no work, no phone calls, nothing. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> the worst plan. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I called my I called my sister and I was like, Shirley, this isn't for me. I gotta go to law school. And she was like, Okay, listen, sounds like you're depressed. You can go to law school if you want, but maybe don't make that decision right now. Yeah. And you know, I didn't make that decision obviously. And about a month later, some calls started coming in. Sure. Right. So it's really difficult to deal with those periods of time where there's just no work and you have no idea. Is the work going to come? But luckily, the work has always managed to find its way to me, which is really nice. It's great advice. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's the whole point is believing in yourself mm -hmm. and following through and being patient and waiting for that to happen. Totally, exactly. Yeah. Don't give up on yourself because I, I I have all these like mini little like moments of like, am I really doing this? Should I be doing this? Maybe I should get an office job, but that's just insanity. Yes, that's yeah. just that's just the insanity of whatever idea was implanted in my mind when I was a kid that being a musician isn't viable. It's totally viable. It's just a different way of living. Yeah. Doc, that is so well put. And I'm telling you, the listeners that want to break into this craft are going to be inspired by what you just said. Really, that, that is so inspiring because people give up. And like you said, you go through that moment of depression when you're down yeah. and you feel like you're losing and you make these knee-jerk decisions mm -hmm. that take you out of something that you dedicated your whole life to because of a little hiccup. Right, exactly. Exactly. And for whatever reason, um, I feel like the lifestyle choice of being a musician is always like, oh, you're going to be a struggling artist or you're going to be a starving artist. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to be starving. You know what I mean? Like you can be a musician and make a career out of it. Um, the, the keys that I someone once told me at school was uh, be nice, work hard and get lucky. And the nicer you are, the harder you work, the luckier you'll get. I love it. That's great advice. One hundred nice doesn't take much to be nice. No, <laughs> no, and I love that. You know, and working just, hard it takes some work, but you have to do that. You don't just sit back and wait for things to happen. You believe in yourself because you're doing the work every day. Exactly. You know, if our listeners watching are seeing all these prestigious people at the South by Southwest Film Festival Sundance, all the major festivals, all the people we interview have one common theme. Everybody says, "Be nice." and loves the craft. Mm -hmm. These are not people that are trying to undercut anybody right. or find underhanded tactics. The people that are at the most prestigious places are the most humble, kind people you're going to meet. Yeah, which, well, I think a great attitude is to have an attitude of abundance. Yeah. Like there is enough. It's so easy to get into this small kind of mindedness of like there's not enough work yeah. and oh, you're a composer, I don't like you, I'm not gonna help you. You know, um, I got a very big break from another composer um, Heather McIntosh, she um, was busy and couldn't take a gig. And so she mentioned my name to the director, Sean Mullen, and he is my connection to Bob Trevino Likes It. Oh, wow. I yeah. got that job through a, refer you know, a recommendation from him. And that's all because another composer was cool enough yeah. to recommend me for the gig. Yes. And there really is no competition because the abundance is out there for everyone. All you need to do is believe in yourself, go after it daily, and just everything happens. I know that sounds so like Pollyanna, but <laughs> but it's true. It's true. It's it's an abundant universe, and if you believe in yourself and you don't give up, you know things will things will happen. No, no, you're one hundred percent right. Let's talk about believing yourself. Things happening. You're breaking into the music business. Let's bring you back to a young man. You're starting to make some traction. What was one of the first projects that you actually started saying? You know what? I'm starting to make a living doing this. Oh well, okay. So my band I was in the band Phantom yeah, Planet. Yep. And we got a record deal when I was still in high school. I was 17. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. This is really cool. Like, I, this dream is unfolding in front of me. And I kind of never looked back. I didn't ever think that I wasn't going to be a musician. Like, I knew that that was just going to be my life's path. Um, but the second we got the placement for California on the OC, that's when I was like, oh, wow, I can... 
I can have a career making music. I can sell music. It's not just making it in my bedroom and, and, and putting it out into the void. It's like you can actually make a business out of it, which was kind of mind-blowing to me. That had to be surreal because what a show. The OC, for those of you that are that young not to remember that, <laughs> the OC was uh, like a yes, massive yeah, success. I mean, springboarded many careers in the business. You must have been so proud as a young man. To still, I mean, your mind, how did that feel the first time? Besides say I can make a living, just as a musician, hearing that for the first time, you must have been blown away. Oh, I, I was so excited. I couldn't <laughs> believe it the first time. Well, the first time I heard California on the radio, uh, it was also very cinematic. I was in the car, and I heard it on the radio, and I pulled over. I pulled over and I just blasted it and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like my dreams are coming true on the side of the road. Um, and uh, it, it, it was just a mind blowing situation. And so that kind of opened the door to sync, uh, synchronized, uh, synchronized, sync writing. Yeah. Um, I was on, I was signed to um, Sony ATV, oh, just writing music for sync purposes. Yeah which is really fun. That, uh, that must be, I'd love to hear more about that experience. She's also been involved with the NFL, Apple. I mean, your yeah. music has gone to a lot of great places. Yeah, uh, I've been fortunate where I've been writing with a bunch of like cool people like Jasmine Ash and Chantal Claire, and um, we just get together and have fun. Yeah, That's the key. It's like if you're writing music and it's not fun, you know, the, the spirit will show up in the product. So if you're love, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go. So if you're loving, if you're loving what you're doing, and you're having a good time with it, and you're really finding you know, there's a lot of energy, I feel like people will respond to that when they listen to it. I love that. That is so realistic because you're actually loving the craft. You're there. Do you feel like it should be not, I mean, again, you have to take it serious, but if you're not playing, how do you create something that's going to move somebody's soul? Right. If you're just coming at it from such a, like, generic, mathematic mindset. Right, exactly. If it's just kind of, okay, I'm going to write a verse, I'm going to write a chorus, and I have a verse, and then a double chorus, you know, if you just are plugging things into a formula... I think that won't connect to anybody. No, no, you're absolutely right. So for young musicians that are up and coming, advice you would give them outside the business for their creativity to find themselves. Mm. How do you get that confidence as a young musician for that first time to say, you know what, I do have a voice that's opposite and I should do something outside the box? I would say if there's something inside of you kind of urging you to create, follow it, yep. listen to it, honor it, because it's there for a reason. You're 100% right. I always found, especially coming up in this, you know, different part of the craft, we're all in the arts, sure. that your self-doubt comes because you say, maybe I shouldn't step outside the box. We're taught as young kids, got to be quiet, listen, sit in the corner, and walk into it. You know, you're pegged into life, basically. Right. And this has to be so opposite. Follow your passion. Go for that. If it's there, it's there for a reason. Go and attack that. Make it fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, it, not music-related, but I started drawing at, at a young age. I would just doodle every time I was on the phone or at school. And during pandemic, I was like, you know what? I'm going to honor this part of me that wants to come out. And I did a drawing every day for a year. Oh, wow. That's nice. great. That's awesome. Just, just for fun because that, there was something inside of me that needed to come out. So just follow that. Channeling that, 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 yeah. channeling. I mean, basically what I see here is it's not like an overnight success. You didn't just get lucky. You put, I believe, 20 years in with your band. Mm -hmm. That all built. I see people popping when they put a, you know, a quarter of a, of a, a, what do you call it? A quarter of a century in, you know, 25 years, all of a sudden people get lucky. No, they put in the time mm -hmm. and they build yeah. their business as well as their, their network. Yeah, absolutely. This is, it's a, uh, someone once said it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. And especially with composing, you know, um, it starts very slow, very, very slow with like short films. Mm -hmm. You're not getting paid. Maybe you don't even love the work that you're doing yet, but you know, you build relationships and you know, when that next person makes a feature, hopefully they bring you with them. It's very sort of like, long-term plan for composing really i, I love that long-term plan that's so important because anybody who's looking for fast results is going to be sorely disappointed in yeah. this craft you know it, yeah. it doesn't happen right and again even if you won that lottery ticket you may not be mature enough to actually accept it and your career may do a quick spike and then a very hard crash mm -hmm. if you didn't put the work in to actually earn your position oh totally i mean when I was in Phantom Planet, I definitely had a, a sense of entitlement because it happened when I was very young. And I was like, oh, of course this is happening. You know, for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course that's what's going on. Um, and then I had to sort of like rebuild my confidence and rebuild my uh, social relationships, rebuild my career from zero after leaving that band, uh, which was a whole other adjustment. No, no, you're absolutely right. And, and 
advice for young people that are coming up there? Because I try to say this all the time, especially when you have a little bit of success, nothing like you had. But any little success at that point, you do get a little arrogant when you're yeah. young and it's a very foolish. Should any advice for people just kind of putting the brakes on a little bit as opposed to coming full that? Or do you feel like as young people, we kind of have to make some of the stupid mistakes and go through it? I mean, I'm still making stupid mistakes. <laughs> And I'm not that young anymore. Um, but I, for me, the keys, I think, to keeping in, uh, a good attitude is gratitude. Yes. Yeah. It's having gratitude you know, just for being at South By, gratitude for being involved with filmmakers like Tracy Lehman and Sean Mullen and Murray Tago. Like, I'm just so grateful that they trust me with their vision. Because yeah. that's what I'm here for is to help them with their vision. It's not the Jacques Rapport show. It's, you know, what, what does this movie need? Um, and it's it's good to kind of just remember that I'm a being of service. That is so well put. For everybody, this craft is a collaborative medium. Mm -hmm. So you have to find your position in within that medium, and we all make it together. You're right. so smart about it. I love that you said that. Now, what's next for Jacques? I'm excited to hear what's next for you because I know it's going to be great things on the horizon. Well, I can't really talk about what's next yet, but okay, I, okay. I I am involved in a sci-fi, uh, which nice. I'm which I'm really excited for. I've got another documentary coming out. Um, but I'm really excited that Skywalker's uh, love story that premiered at Sundance is going to be on Netflix, which is really exciting. Yeah. And I feel like Bob Trevino likes it is going to have a home very, very shortly. Um, so I'm just really trying to enjoy the experience with those films right now. No, no, that's great. And being a veteran at this point of the business, <laughs> do you still get that charge when you see something on Netflix? You know what I mean? Because it feels like every time you see something, wow, it's there. Do you still get that? Oh, for sure. Um, I did a documentary called It Ain't Over about Yogi Berra, yeah, yeah, sure. and that came up in my Netflix feed, like, oh, up yeah. next. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. heck yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> you never lose it, right? No, yeah. no, it never yeah, goes yeah, away. It never, never goes yeah. away. So when our fans want to learn more about you, social media, websites, where can we find out more about Jacques? Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm the real Jacques B. And then uh, my website is jacquebrowbarmusic.com. Any last final words of advice for all the listeners out there to one day become a Jacques? <laughs> um, just as, as corny as it is, just follow what's inside of you because that'll lead you to where you want to be. You wouldn't have the desire if you weren't capable of achieving it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's there for a reason. Yes. I love it. Jacques, we're getting the signal. I think you are fantastic. What you're doing, your accomplishments in this field, the craft, but more importantly, as a person. Thank you. You are really fantastic, so Jock. You are somebody who's so much. great. I'm inspired by being around you. It's really <laughs> yeah. fantastic. You're humble, but your body work says, wow, look at you. I mean, we are here again, South by Southwest 2024. Again, thank you to the beautiful people at the JW Marriott. Jock Rotbar. His film is here. He's fantastic. Look him up on social media. You are going to learn so much from this individual. His films are all over the world. Jock, thank you so much thank for coming you. on the Live Your Dreams podcast. You are fantastic. We'll have links to Jock's uh, social medias and all of our descriptions on iHeartRadio, Audible, along with our video on our YouTube component. So you can look up Jock personally through our sites and tell him you saw him from the Live Your Dreams podcast. I'm sure he'll like that. Doc, again, thank you so much. Thank We're you. coming from day three, 2024, South by Southwest from the JW Marriott rooftop. We'll see you in a few minutes on our next interview. Thank you so much, Jacques.